Good to be with you here this morning, um, finishing up our Yes and Amen series. And of course, we're so glad to see you here online as well. And I just want to jump in. It's always hard to come into this service without being part of what happened in worship. Was it good, everybody? Was it so good? All right. Because I know it was. And the reason why it's important is because of where we're going to go with this song, uh, with this this particular sermon today. Um, today the sermon is called the song of the intercessor. Go ahead and say that. The song of the intercessor. You know, our life is full of soundtracks. Don't you agree? I don't know about you, but when I married my husband, I, I like music. I sing. I'm a worshiper. All that kind of good stuff. I met my husband in worship and he was a drummer and I was a singer and it was like, not love at first sight, love after four and a half years. But that's a whole other conversation for another time and a whole other thing. Not the point. What I found out when I married my husband is that he has an internal DJ. There is not a thing that we do that he does not have a playlist or a soundtrack for. Do I have anybody in this room or online who is like that? It's like, let's go grocery shopping. And he's like, ooh, there's a song for that. Play. Hey, let's go. Um, let's go get dinner. Ooh, song for that. Let's go. We once went to Williamsburg for the 4th of July, and for a whole hour, he just kept changing songs that all had to do with America, stars and stripes, hamburgers and hot dogs. I don't know, but it was like a whole thing, and I'm like, how do you do that? They weren't planned. They just came out of his belly. He's like, I just keep those songs on the inside. I said, well, okay. Which makes me always wonder, what kind of worship songs do we keep on the inside of us? What is our intercessory soundtrack? See, we've been on this series talking about prayer, intercession, standing in the gap for those things that God is desiring to do here on earth as it is in heaven on behalf of those who cannot or will not pray for themselves. Pastor Joel has preached three powerful messages on the call of the intercessor, on the prayer of the intercessor, on the delay of the intercessor. And today I want to challenge us with the song track, if you will, of the intercessor. Because if you are going to pray as an intercessor, the word of God invites us also to sing the song of intercession. Because it is two sides of the same coin. When we begin to pray, our words are activated. But when we begin to sing, our whole being becomes activated. Singing and music actually taps into every component of a human body. Did you know that? And so when we pray with our words, there's a limit. But when we partner it with worship, with song, with music, it begins to have a vast, limitless opportunity to connect with the heart of God. But I wonder if we even have an intercessory soundtrack that comes into play when we begin to pray, when we begin to intercede. And this isn't something that I'm just making up for today. This is happening around the throne room of God right now. There is prayer and intercession taking place. And I want to read out of Revelation chapter 5, 6 through 10. And I want to set the stage before I begin to read. This is John the Apostle, and he's having an end-time vision. And God is beginning to reveal stuff to him for us later on to see. And he's standing in a throne room. And on the throne is seated God the Father. And in his hand is a scroll that no one can open. And I believe that this scroll talks about what God's plan, his will is to execute his say-so on the earth. Can you say say-so? Isn't it good to know that God has the final say-so in every one of our lives? Amen? He has the say-so for humankind, but he certainly has the say-so for Tina Davis. And he has the final say-so for each one of us. And so God is on the throne with the scroll. And 
There are four and 20 elders. There are angels standing around the throne and they are saying, who can open this scroll? Who is the one who's going to be able to declare this is the final say so? And this is what it says in verse six. And between the throne, the four living creatures and among the elders, and the elders represent humanity. I saw a lamb, Jesus Christ, standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and he took the scroll from the right hand of him, God the Father, who was seated on the throne. In verse 8, and when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp. Say harp. That represents worship and music and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. There is worship and there is intercession happening in the heavenly realms around the throne of God as we make intercession for God's final say so in every situation and circumstance. Isn't it amazing to know that he keeps those prayers and presents it to Jesus? And as Pastor Joel preached a couple weeks ago, he said, if we ask Jesus, what are you praying for? He's going to give us the language of intercession because we can pray partner with him. But I would also say, heaven, what are you singing right now? So that I can sing the song of the Lord in the midst of my intercession. And verse 9 goes on to say, and they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and by your blood you ransomed people from God from every tribe, tongue, and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priest to our God. And they shall reign on the earth. Can God's people say amen to the reading of his word? That very reality the Lord wants to translate right here, right now, to remind us that there is one who is able to open the scroll of your life, the scroll of the circumstances you're praying about, the scroll of the situation that you're standing in the gap for with a final say-so. And he is inviting you, not just with words, but the song of heaven to see it come to pass our prayers rise as incense, and our worship acknowledges his glory and his power. See, worship and intercession are different sides of the same coin. Oswald Chambers says this, worship and intercession go together. One is impossible without the other. One is impossible without the other. Because when words don't cut it, a song will. So today I want to simply pose this question. What types of songs are we able to use as we intercede? What kinds of soundtracks, if you will, does the Lord want to deposit or release in us as a partner to our intercession? Are we shortchanging ourselves in our prayer life is what I'm asking. And what does the Lord want to reveal to us today? See, throughout Scripture, Old and New Testament, we see where song and prayer are married. They go hand in hand to empower us to truly pray without ceasing, as it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. And of course, there's no greater song book than the Psalms written by David with each and David and others, with each psalm being a song unto itself. Many of us know the psalms because we have sung them throughout our lifetime if we've grown up in church. There's so many songs. As the deer panteth for the water. That one, it's a psalm. Some are like, really? I know. You're welcome. <laughs> David himself established around the clock worship and prayer in the tabernacle of God. And I believe we are being invited in these last days before Jesus returns to not just be a people that pray, but a people that pray and worship the one who is more than able. 
So today I just want to talk about four types of songs or soundtracks that God wants to deposit and employ in each one of us in partnership with our intercession to see his will come to pass. Are you ready? All right. Are you ready? Oh, there we are. Okay. The first song that I want to speak of is simply this, the song of worship that is intended to arise with our intercession. The song of worship, when we intercede, leads to surrender. Let me explain. See, intercession reveals God's heart, but our worship of him responds to his character and his beauty. To worship God is to agree with who he is, and to intercede is to agree with what his heart longs to do. Oftentimes when we intercede, we come to him this way. Oh God, if you would do this thing my way. Oh God, see here's the issue and also here's the strategy. Oh God, here is my situation or the situation of so and so. And if you do it any other way than the way that I think is best, I probably won't notice. Because when we come to intercession outside of worship and we don't see him, we're really saying, my will be done. But when you behold the one who loves you and is for you and you recognize his majesty, his power and his goodness, you are saying to him, your will be done. So when you begin to pray out of your own understanding, it's this big. But when you look at the one who is beautiful above ten thousands upon ten thousands, your prayers become this big. When you begin to behold the one who is good all the time, your prayers begin to grow. When you know that he is faithful even when you're faithless, your prayers begin to grow. When you know that he loves you regardless of whether you're lovable or not and what you're praying into is not lovable, your prayers begin to grow. When we worship, we come into an attitude of surrender to the one who is bigger than the prayer I'm praying praying. The song of worship causes intercession to expand outside of my will to his will. And when his will is done, the greater good shall be accomplished. That is when his kingdom comes and his will is done here on earth as it is in heaven. I don't know about you, but I want what is in heaven to take place here on earth. Worship is the key partner to intercession because it surrenders my heart to the one who is more than able. It makes intercession cooperative with God. My worship, my song of adoration, my song that recognizes that he is God and God alone causes my prayer to arise as incense unto the one who is able. Today, I just want to encourage each one of us, as we are interceding, would we begin to worship all the more to see him do what he wants to do in our midst? Can I say amen? Amen. Number two, we have the first one is a song of worship. Number two, I believe he wants to release the song of praise to his people because it builds expectation. See, the song of worship causes us to see him rightly. The song of praise causes us to remember rightly. Worship helps us see who he is. Praise helps us to remember what he has done. So when we sing songs like breakthrough, but we don't remember that he has already broken through, it changes the dynamic of how we sing it. What praise does when we partner it with uh, intercession is it elevates our expectation of who God is and what he will do. Because what is praise? It's exaltation. It's thanksgiving. It's coming into court, his courts with praise and thanksgiving. It is bringing God glory, acknowledging what he has done and that he is powerful to do it yet again. Can I hear an amen? 
Praise itself is what fuels intercession. It's what keeps us going. It's what keeps us going. Because when we can't see what's coming in front of us, we can look behind us and see what he has already done and apply it to what he shall do. And this belongs to every one of us who is a worshiper. Before I go any further, I want to make sure that you understand that these songs are not for the worship leaders. These songs that are being released to the intercessors are for the body of Christ who are called to stand watch before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Can I say amen? Now look at your neighbor and say, these songs are for you. Oftentimes we think the songs of the Lord are reserved for those people who can sing. The song of the Lord requires no talent. It simply requires a heart that sees his beauty, sees who he is, and is willing to hear what heaven has to say and declare it right back to him, not just in word, but in the melody of our hearts, as it says in Ephesians chapter 13. I love that Paul says, sing a melody from your heart, because then it qualifies every last one of us. Did you know your heart could sing? Keeps us a good tune, too. A song of praise builds expectation, and it fuels intercession. And I believe it does it three different ways. It does it through reflection, it does it through remembrance, and it does it through rehearsal. David said in Psalm 61, 4, when I remember you upon my bed, so will I ever sing praises to your name. When I remember upon my bed, I think that's reflection. Anybody ever at the end of the day lay down and you just play over, you reflect on what's happened throughout your day? But you ever know that it's oftentimes we reflect on everything that didn't go quite right? We reflect on everything that we didn't do right, somebody else didn't do right, something that we hope will never happen again, and we just reflect on all of those things. And David is saying, when I lay down at bed, would I reflect on the goodness of my God for this day? Sometimes we have to reflect on his goodness for this hour or for this minute because God is always doing something good, but we keep moving and we never reflect on what he has already done which inspires praise. David began to practice that in the nighttime. Praise is fueled by remembrance. Exodus 15 uh, writes down the song of Moses, which is simply a song of praise that celebrates that God parted the Red Sea so the people of Israel could go from what seemed like an impossible situation to the promised land. How many need to know that God can take you from the impossible to the promise in just one moment? That's what praise does. It remembers, it remembers. And Psalm 20 and 7, it sings of the same song as the song of Moses. Why? Because generations come by and they forget. So we got to keep remembering. And praise does that. It helps us remember the goodness of God. Psalm 25 and 6 says, Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they are of old. What I love about that verse is when we remember, we get to remind God that he had already done it and he can do it again. We get to bring God to remembrance of the things that he has done when we praise him. And then we rehearse. Psalm 136, 1 through 26 Every verse in that chapter says this, and his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. You notice as parents, if you have children, you have to tell them more than one time something so it sticks. Any moms and dads out there online who are like, yes, yes, yes. Same thing happens with us, those who are faithful followers of Jesus Christ. We have to rehearse so it sticks. We have to remember and rehearse what he has already done so we can sow it into faith for what he will yet do through our intercession. 
church, would we begin to practice the song of praise so our expectation would arise and we would come into intercession, not hopeful, but expecting. Not just, I wish, but I know he can and he will. May the song of praise always be on our lips so that our prayers will be full of expectation for what he will do. The song of worship belongs to the intercessor. The song of praise belongs to the intercessor. Third, the song in the night belongs to the intercessor. And the song in the night is what infuses hope for the hopeless place. Hope to one who's been waiting a long time. If you've been waiting a long time, there was a word of the Lord at the Kempsville campus that for many people there was dust that had settled on their shoulder. After years of praying and believing, it had started getting dusty because nothing had happened. And the word of the Lord was, shake off that dust because I am still able to do what I promised I will do. The song in the night infuses hope for those long, drawn-out places of intercession. The song in the night. What do I mean by night? I mean night. See, nighttime tends to be the time where lamenting is the strongest. It gets dark. Our mood changes, right? Dr. Jessica changes. At nighttime, our whole inner being, our way of processing changes when there's no light. We begin to be more afraid, more anxious. We're less distracted by everything that happens in the daytime. And at night is when we begin to be more discouraged. And it's at night that the song of the Lord is released to those who will stay in intercession. Those who will stay in the place of prayer. There's a song in the night that is released that will release hope. You know, Pastor Melvin and uh, Mama Denise, I love them. How many love him in this house? Say amen, amen, and amen. Online, say amen. These are mothers and fathers of prayer and intercession. And one of the things I love the most about Mama Denise is that her favorite time of prayer is what she calls the night watch. And that is the song of the night. It's from midnight to three. And I say, God bless you. Here's my prayer request. You take it to the throne between midnight and three. I'll be back to pick it back up at 6.30 a.m. when the sun starts to rise. That's kind of how I do with her. I'm like, here it is. You take that one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because she loves the song in the night because she knows that that's where hope lives. It lives in the song of the Lord in the night watch. See, it never denies what is happening. It only, the night song, leans into the only one who is trustworthy and reliable to accomplish what he promised. Psalm 42, 8 and 11, and I love all of Psalm 42 because it repeatedly says, why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall praise him, my salvation and my God. And verse 8 says, the Lord will send his goodness in the daytime, and his song will be with me in the night. A prayer to the God of my life. Today, if you're going through a midnight hour or you're going through a night season, the Lord says, I have a song of hope for you to sing in this place. Trust me and I will be faithful. The midnight hour reminds me, the midnight song reminds me of Acts chapter 16, verse 25, where Paul and Silas are stuck in jail because they got caught setting somebody free from the demonic oppression. Well, that's a thing. And they got put into jail, and it finds the word of God says in verse 25, about Midnight. How many know that that is the night hour? About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And then prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, something has to break. Something has to break. When we begin to sing and pray songs of hope, something has to break. And it continues to say, and there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken 
and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bonds were unfastened. I felt like the Lord said, not only am I going to break the chains, I'm going to break the foundation that the chains are linked to in the name of Jesus. For those who feel like you've been bound for a long time, he's going to break the foundation, the roots of that which has caused those hearts to be bound. And I hear the Lord say, walk in hope because I'm breaking through all the way to the bottom. So chains can no longer even be attached. It's the song in the night infuses hope when we choose to partner with the song of the Lord. And I love that David says in that psalm I read earlier that it is his song in the night, not my song. He releases it to us so that we will have hope. And last, as I bring this to a close, he releases the song of worship, the song of praise, the song in the night hour. But also, God wants us to partner with heaven's song in our intercession. The song of heaven gives us a kingdom perspective. It gives us eyes to see what we would not see in the natural when we hear heaven's song. Heaven's song is a prophetic song. It's a song that has never been written. Listen, I know Deep Creek, and I know this place knows how to sing some prophetic songs. I also know that there are a lot of people, when we're singing prophetic songs, are looking at the screen for the words, and then there's no words for that song that somebody just started singing, and they're like, well, where's the words? Well, how come they're not changing the words? Where's it? We got to get to the ones I know. But can I encourage us to say in the songs we don't know? Because those are the ones that heaven is releasing to infuse us with a perspective that is not of our own. It is the kind of song that lifts heavy hearts, that lifts eyes to the hills where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And he never grows weary. He never slumbers or sleep as we've already declared today. And when he releases his song, we have hope. And strength for the journey because the journey isn't only here on earth it goes all the way to eternity can we say amen to that see we have a different kind of way when we pray when we know that we don't stop when the world stops or even when our lives stop here on earth we've got eternity still waiting for us songs change intercessions change when we have eternity as our perspective and it comes from our kingdoms songs he releases songs of deliverance over us when we hear kingdom songs and heaven's songs psalm 32 6 and 7 says this for this cause everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found, surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. Why? Because you are my hiding place. Oh, this is a song. You shall preserve me from trouble. You will surround me with songs of deliverance. It makes me think of 2 Kings 6 and 17, where Elisha is and his servant are being surrounded by the armies of Syria. And Elisha is pretty chill about it. You know those people who get real chill in really scary places and you're like, I'm going to need you to get a little panicked. Just a little. If you could just have a little something about this moment. Right? That's Elisha. He was like, I'm good. And the servant is absolutely freaking out. Elisha, don't you see the armies that are all around us? Don't you see the armies that are all around us? And I can almost see Elisha singing the song in his heart. The song of heaven. A spiritual song. And in that moment, he says, oh God, open his eyes. And suddenly the servant's eyes are open. And you know the story. There was an army between the Syrian army and them an army of angels with swords raised up a, a flaming swords to protect them from that which was coming and all Elijah had to say to his servant was this there are more for us than are against us Today, when we sing heaven's song, it reminds us that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. It's a kingdom perspective. 
He releases a new song, a new song, a new song in our mouths. Psalm 40, 1 through 3, verse 3 says, and he put a new song in my mouth. You know, there are songs that God wants to give each one of us in those places of intercession that no one else has sung before. A song that raises faith and gives us eyes to see what we're standing for. There's songs of rejoicing that he wants to release over us. Zephaniah 3 and 17. For the Lord your God is in your midst, the mighty one who will save. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. I know of so many people that in the place of interceding, hard intercession, begin to giggle and laugh. Why? Because there's a song of rejoicing that begins to bubble up in their heart that gives them the stamina to stay in that place. And it is the song of rejoicing from heaven that is out poured on them. And finally, we get to sing the songs angels sing when we hear heaven's song. And that song simply takes us right back to the first song, the song of worship. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Today, there's a labor of intercession that we're intended and called to. But there is also the joy of the song of the Lord that will partner us in that place of intercession. And my final question to us today is simply this. What is your song of intercession in this hour? What is your intercessory soundtrack today? There are so many powerful songs. And I almost felt like last, last night as I was thinking on this, I was like, the Lord was like, Tina, why don't you make a soundtrack for each one of those? Make a playlist. You know you have a playlist when you go running? You have a playlist for when you're just chilling? I have a playlist when I have to write. And the Lord's like, what if you made a worship playlist for when you need the song of worship? What if you made a praise playlist when you need to be more expectant? What if you had a hope playlist for those night watches? What if you had a kingdom prophetic song playlist so that you could stand in a place where you cannot see how kingdom of heaven is going to come here on earth? Oh, would the song of the Lord arise in us even today so that breakthrough would come in worship and in intercession. Can you say amen? Can I pray over you as Pastor Melvin makes his way forward? Online, I want to pray with you as well. Father, I just thank you that you want to release your song to every heart. That when they come into the places of singing, it wouldn't just be fun songs or clever songs or music that just sounds good. But they would begin to partner with those songs of the Lord in their places of prayer to see you do immeasurably more than they could ask for or imagine because you are the one who is more than able to meet us where we are and in our place of needs. Release your songs to your people in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope that you enjoyed our sermon today. I hope that you were inspired and challenged. And maybe you have a question about something that you heard in the message today, or maybe you need prayer. We would love to take the time to pray with you and answer any questions that you might have. All you need to do is simply send us an email to online at newlife.global and we would love to connect with you. Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You should see the link right over here somewhere and turn those notifications on. That way you are notified every single time we go live on YouTube. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.